So today I'm going to talk to you about all the curriculum that I would consider maybe more electives or extras or just some extracurriculars that we have planned for the upcoming school year. Hi friends, welcome back to Calm in the Chaos Homeschool. Today's video is the fourth video of a four part series that I've been putting up of all my curriculum picks for the next school year. So if you're interested in seeing family subjects, math or language arts, go ahead and look back and see if you can find those in my videos. It is also a collaboration video hosted by myself and Shauna from Homegrown Homeschool and some other moms are joining in on this collaboration. So check the playlist below to see what the other moms are doing in this area as well. Just so you know how old my kids are right now, they are 9 to 13 and they're going into 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th grade in this upcoming school year. So the first thing I wanted to share with you is not necessarily a curriculum, but it is something that we're adding to our homeschool. And I'm actually not quite sure how we're going to be using it yet, but my upcoming sixth grader, she requested a planner. And since her and her older sister are now in middle school, I was thinking it's a really good time to start using a planner. So the planner that I chose for them after looking around a bit is made by Apologia and it is just the, it's called the Ultimate Daily Planner for Students. So I will link that in the description box below. I haven't looked through this planner too much, but really it's a basic planner and I like how it's laid out. It has Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday as the main part of the planner. Of course it has monthly views and it has some questions and answers. It has some goal setting pages and things like that. So I am not sure exactly how we're going to incorporate that into our homeschool. I guess we'll see how we use that, but I picked those up for the upcoming school year. So one for each of my girls. Something I would like to try to incorporate again next year. We didn't do it this year, but we did try it our first year for a little while and it didn't stick at that point, but I'd like to try again, is a personal devotion time for my children. So last time we tried this, I had gotten my girls, uh, these are Word of Life, Word of Life little devotionals. And so we got about eight weeks in, I think out of the 52 weeks, and we kind of started it towards the end of the last school year, so we didn't really give it a really good try. So I would like to try to start that again. So both of my girls have a lot that they could do in these devotionals. And then I picked up for my boys the third and fourth grade options. So these are just, each, each one of these squares is one day, not a lot to do. There's a passage to read at the top. So they tell you what passage to read and then just a few activities or prompts on how to pray or just fill in the blank or an activity. So something that should be pretty simple and easy and hopefully fun for my kids and just give them a time to learn how to do a personal Bible study or personal devotion. So I hope to incorporate that into our school next year. For anything that I mention here, I will link in the description below if I can find a link to the products. So Definitely check out the description if you see anything that is interesting here. So the next thing that I am adding as sort of an extra extracurricular type thing, my girls did this, the Big Life Journal last year, the Big Life Journal for kids last year. And I got the kids version because I didn't want it to be hard. I wanted it to be easy and pretty simple. So this is a lot of mindset type stuff. So here is the front page, the table of contents. It says, believe in yourself. Mistakes help you grow. Be persistent. Be grateful. Be unique. Be you. Challenges make you stronger. Effort is key. Love learning. Be kind. Make a difference in the world. So that's the table of contents. So I really like this so that my kids know that it's okay to make mistakes and just to be teaching those growth mindset and positive thinking sort of things. So that I did with the girls this past year. So I picked this up. I don't think I'm going to do this with my boys this coming year. 
I'm gonna save this, I think, for the year after that. I think they'll be more able to go through this more on their own in a year. So we're actually not gonna be doing that. But I bought four books because they come in a set like this. So I wanted to get the Big Life Journal, and this is the one for teens. So they are going to be going through this, and I'm guessing it's gonna be pretty similar. There's the table of contents. It all starts here, exploring you, dreaming up your life, from dreams to reality, the key to success. So those are the chapters. And so there is a bit more words inside of these. But my girls were really excited when they saw that I had gotten the next level of these. They wanted to start right away. And so um, we're actually just finishing up the other ones. So we haven't started. I'm just gonna save that for the beginning of the school year. I'm not gonna let them get started early. Something to look forward to. But like I said, uh, they come in sets like this. Some You can buy them individually, but you can get a discount sometimes when you buy both. So I bought the set so that I have two for my boys in the next school year when they're ready to start something like this. So my sixth grader has actually been working on this artistic pursuits for art since middle of the past school year, not this last school year. So she's actually spent a year and a half on this. We just scheduled it once or twice a week, really slowly throughout the two years. She has really enjoyed it. She likes art. She is very independent. So she just did this on her own. She would just read the lesson and do the art that they told her to do. We bought the kit. So it comes with all the supplies that she needed. So she has really enjoyed doing this. So my seventh grader decided that she also wants to do artistic pursuits. And I thought that this was a good level for her. This is the elementary four or five book one. I do want her to be pretty independent with it. So I thought this was a good one to start with. And since we already have it, she has started working on these. She's about four units in, maybe about four units in and they're 16 units. So she will continue to use this through the next school year and it should be perfect for finishing up in the next school year. So my sixth grader, I asked her if she was interested in doing more art like this and she said yes. So what we decided, we don't have it yet, but we decided to pick up Artistic Pursuits, the middle school version, and I think it's book two. So book one is always kind of more the elements of art and composition. And so I didn't want her to get the middle school version of almost the same book that she did. So we're going into the middle school version of book two which has more color. So I think they're going to be talking more about color. They're gonna be using pastels and things like that. So I think that'll be fun for her to add some color in her drawing. Okay, so the next thing, I'm really excited about the next thing. It is something I've never seen a homeschooling YouTube mom talk about, and it just kind of fell, fell into my lap. My sixth grader, she is very artistic, she's very creative, she's very, she's always coming up with ideas. I think that she's going to become an entrepreneur when she grows up. I think that whatever she does, she's gonna be probably starting a business, doing something creative, something like that. So I was in a Facebook group and I don't know how this conversation came about, but someone contacted me and was asking me what homeschool parents are looking for as far as financial education and things like that. And I told him, I told him about my daughter. I said, actually what I need a step-by-step -step course or guide for middle school students to start a business. Cause I know my daughter is totally capable of starting a business and learning the things she needs to learn for a business. But I don't have the time to sit there and kind of walk her through that process. I can help her, but I, I have my own business and I have this YouTube channel and I have homeschooling my four kids and I just don't have the time to dedicate to walking her step by step through the whole process. So I really need a guide that she could do as an 11 year old, something that she could follow and get a business started because she would really enjoy that. And so the person I was talking to, he's like, I have that, I have that course. I have a course for, I think it's 10 to 18 year old kids who wanna start a business. And so I checked out the website and it looked really good. It has a lot of great reviews. It has a lot of testimonials. So 
I was really excited. There are two options. So there is a self-paced option and then there's a live class option. And he offered to give me either of those if I wanted to have my daughter go through the course in exchange for a review of the course when we are done. So I'm really excited about that. I think my daughter's really going to enjoy this course. She picked the self-paced option, which I think is great because she can just do it on her own pace. There is also a group where she'll be able to chat with other kids who are in this course. So I'm just gonna have to figure out what that looks like as a parent and how I feel about that. But it does come with a variety of different things. So we have not started it yet. So I don't know a whole lot other than what I've seen online, what I've seen in the testimonials and things like that. But I think it's gonna be perfect for her to walk her through the steps. So with this course, you get the course, but then you also need to purchase this book. So I just purchased this on Amazon. So the course is called The Simple Startup, and it says A Beginner's Guide to Starting a Business. This is the student workbook. So it talks through generating a business idea, teamwork and working with others, business snapshot, market research, the business plan, production process, marketing mix, marketing and sales, cost, price, profit, financing, the pitch, and final review. So it starts with the brainstorming process and it just works through them coming up with the ideas. It walks them through kind of the product, cost analysis for the product, how are they gonna market the product, things like that. So I'm really excited for this course, as you can probably tell, and I will definitely be doing a full review once we have completed the course. And I'm sure I'll be updating you as we go through our school year on how she's liking it and how things are going. So I have seen courses like this for maybe high schoolers. And so I'm hoping that this is going to work for my daughter who is just starting middle school. I think she's up for the challenge, but it'll be interesting to see if this course can meet her where she's at. So I will definitely link below a link to the course if you're interested in taking a look for yourself. But anyway, she's excited about this and I'm really excited about this and I'm excited to see what happens as a result of this course. So in my homeschool during our morning basket, we have been working on Mandarin Chinese this whole last year and my children want to continue with that. So we are doing that in our morning basket. I'm not gonna show the materials for that right now because it's more of a morning basket thing but we do some basic vocabulary i have some mandarin readers so i read through the mandarin readers we make little cards with the nouns and the phrases we have a book where we sing songs to help us learn some common phrases so that is a base of what we do in our morning basket with all my kids but my sixth grader is the one who is adopted from taiwan she is more interested in learning Mandarin Chinese than my other kids are. And I would love for her to be able to be conversational in Mandarin Chinese in case we ever visit, or if she ever wants to go and live there for a while just to see what it's like when she's older, I would like her to be able to get around and know some of the basics. So once a week, she has a Mandarin lesson with a college student who lives in Taiwan. And so they just have conversations in Mandarin and she teaches her some basic vocabulary and some phrases and things like that. She's really enjoyed that class. And I'm thinking in the upcoming school year, they have been focusing more on conversation, but I feel like it's time to maybe start a little bit of writing with Chinese. I have done so much research on teaching Chinese and Mandarin and, and workbooks or textbooks that are somewhat accessible to people who like I speak Mandarin, I can write very basically, maybe first, second grade. I can read what I consider important things like the menu when I go out to eat or things like that, or just, I know the basics, I know the basics, but you have to memorize a lot of characters in Chinese to be able to actually read like a novel or something like that. And I couldn't do that. But I wanted her to get started on learning some Mandarin Chinese. So I have chosen Chinese Made Easy. Now, we have used this before when she was younger. I had her going to a Mandarin class like on Sunday afternoons in a town 20 minutes away because that's where there were more Mandarin speakers. But she was going to a class and they used this Chinese made easy. And so I guess it's just really, I don't know, it's the best I've been able to find. 
So they will teach some basic words. They'll teach some writing. So this is the textbook. And then I have the workbook from before. So she has actually started on the workbook in the past, but I'm sure she will remember all these like one, two, three, four. That's pretty basic. And she'll just be continuing there. So really she hasn't even written much. She hasn't even gotten to 10 in her writing. And then there's some basic characters and things like that. So she'll be working on, I think I'm gonna ask the tutor if her and, and Annika can work through a little bit of this in the upcoming school year, just to add another level to her Mandarin Chinese. So as far as curriculum, that is what we're doing for curriculum or extras that I know of at this point. For extracurriculars, my sixth grader wants to continue to do hip hop. She was doing hip hop this past semester and she wants to do it again. She really likes to do different kinds of dance. She's done a lot of, she skips around. She's done ballet, that's not her favorite. She's done contemporary, she's done hip hop, and now I think she likes hip hop, so she's she's continuing with hip hop this time. And then my two boys are going to continue to do Taekwondo. And my seventh grader, I'm not sure, she might want to do a dance, she might want to do hip hop with her younger sister. So we'll see what she chooses if she does that or something else. And so that's kind of our extracurriculars. As far as other things we plan on doing outside of the school next year or as part of our regular routine, we're gonna to continue to meet with our nature walk, nature study group, Charlotte Mason group every two weeks, if that's still going. I think it will probably still be going. So meeting at parks, we go for walks, we hang out, we do some nature journaling every other week. And then every Friday, we will continue to meet with our church homeschool small group where we just, we get together, sometimes we do hikes, sometimes we do art. I might teach some technology classes to the kids. We might split them up. So more of a official co-op, I might teach the older kids some certain things in technology and then teach the younger kids some things in technology while my friend teaches maybe art or music and do something maybe twice a month like that and do casual, casual the other two times a month. So we've been talking about things like that. So we'll see if we do that. We have 15 kids when we all get together from the ages of five to I think about 14. So that's always been fun. We've been meeting up with them since we first started homeschooling. So that's that's something that I hope will continue in this upcoming school year. So that is what we're planning for our electives, for our extracurriculars, for the upcoming school year. Don't forget to give this video a like if you like content like this. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd love it if you would subscribe and hit the bell notification so you know when I upload any new videos. If you want any further flip throughs or more information about any of these, please do let me know. Don't forget to check the playlist that I linked below to see what all the other moms are doing as electives and extracurriculars in the upcoming school year. Thank you so much for coming today and I hope to see you in my next video. Goodbye everyone.